hey guys in this video i want to go over a small security consideration that you must keep in mind whenever you deal with the wix data api now the wix data api is used to uh, query insert filter it's one of the it's one of the most robust and strongest uh, apis that wix Velo provides it allows you to interact with your database in every possible way that you can imagine from inserting items to updating to deleting items in your database so whenever you interact with your database it's always good to do all the operations or make the final decisions on the server instead of the page so whenever you open up the page with dev mode turned on what you see down here is the page code now the page code is a public file which can be accessed by the user whoever loads your website on their site and possibly if they are a little experienced they can make calls which can bypass the certain validations that you have put up on your website's page over here so i'm going to show you how you can secure your validations uh, how you can securely validate entry before inserting it into a data da database and make sure that nobody has access to the database where you submit this data from to so let's assume that you're collecting subscribers so you have a button and then you have a input element but we're not going let's say that we don't want to use the validation element that wix provides over here we want to have some additional validation and uh, we want to uh, allow only certain means to go into the database so for this what i'll do head over to code files under backend click on plus and click on create new web module name this data validation now this is your backend file this is what uh, the, whatever you write over here the decisions the functions uh, it's going to happen on the server and there is no way any user can manipulate what's uh, what uh, functions is running on the server so let's create a small function which will allow you to validate the data on the server so export function validate email right now between the two brackets i will actually receive the email that is sent from the front end which is the user type email and over here i'm going to run an if statement to check if email dot starts with let me just check the javascript term for starts with so it starts with and then i write down shantanu if this is true then return status 200 else return status 400 all right so what we are doing over here we're checking if the uh, if the string that is returned from the front end which is entered by the user starts with shantanu or not if it starts we return a 200 back to the page else we return a 400 so let's go to our page let's import this function on our page like this so let's call import curly brackets inside it the function name from backend and then slash and then the file name so the file name is data validation all right now on the click create an on click event handler for your button from the properties panel now over here call your validate email function and send the contents of the email input element Put a dot then statement res and then console log the results so over here we're sending making this call to the backend ap backend function then we wait for the response from the backend and then we console log it on the developer console to check what the response is so let's click on preview first let's write down duke lemon at gmail.com and click on submit 
So as you can see, the response from the backend is a 400 in both cases because I clicked the button twice. So let's go ahead and actually give it what it actually wants. So it's shown to me at gmail.com and then click on submit. So as you can see, this is a 200, which means the server returned a 200 response. And you can see a slight delay between uh, me clicking the button and then the response printing over here. It's not as fast as you would expect on the page because it actually makes a network call over the internet to the server and then it, res res uh, it returns the response and shows you the response from the server. So that's why there's a delay. Now, in the next part, let's go ahead and create a database. Let's quickly name the database subscribers and set this database to private data so that nobody, uh, no public entity can write, read or update this data. So when you load a Wix database, when you create a new Wix database, you already have a column called title. So for this video, I'm just going to be using that column that is auto generated by Wix, which is called title. So this is title and I'm going to wait for it to load. So let's go back on your backend file data validation and instead of validating uh, for a string, checking for a string, let's actually create a regex. So this is a regex for an email. All right. Now let's test this regex using this function over here. So if email regex dot text and then the string value which is passed from the front end is true then we proceed with the data entry proceed with insert into database but if it's not true i return a error message so error message email is invalid and this is just one way of doing it. There's many more ways that you can use to do this. All right. Now, first of all, let's again return a status 200 if the email is correct. Okay. Preview. So let's type an incorrect email. So, lemon.com and then let's give a space at the end as you can see i get an error message called error email is invalid now what i can do is i can actually print this error message on the screen to show to the user so for that i take a text input element i just put a default text for error change the color to red change the id to error and mark it hidden as default now Whenever the validation function is run, I first hide the error so that uh, if the user was prompted an error in this previous call, they will not see the error again constantly on the screen. But if there is an error, so let's see if res, sorry, if res.status is equal to 400, then error.text is equal to res. Error dot message and then error dot show and we just go back to our backend file and we insert a new value called status 400 for the error object return the error object but if it is okay then we just uh, let's just change the label. So submit label the buttons label success. Let's also go ahead and disable the button while the call has been made to the server. Over here we enable it so the user can retry. Okay, so I think this is good. Now Let's try it out again. Again, let's send the 
error, uh, sorry, let's send a text which is definitely not in email. So you can see email is invalid printed over here. Now let's send a text which is actually in the correct email format. So see, you can see success. Now, what to do to insert the data on your backend, create a function called data insert. Carry over the email, create an object, let to insert is equal to title email. Wix data dot insert, then the database ID. So subscribers to insert is the object and then we have to put so if you remember when I created the database the permissions was private so what I need to do is I need to provide this variable sorry object to override the authorization check because if I don't the insert will fail uh, because uh, as, as per our database permission uh, goes uh, it's not allowed to uh, insert anything from anyone except the admin and a normal website user is not an admin okay so let's go ahead and check it if this thing works so shamnoidevelopment.com submit and i can see a success message so let's go back into my database and check if this item was actually inserted So as you can see the item has been inserted so this is how you should validate your uh, user entered input uh, input uh, value uh, user entered values on your backend before inserting into a database securely